Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Saria, and I hope you will subscribe and check out my other DIY Make It Your Tutorials. Obviously, if you clicked on this video, the ears you are most interested in making in currently are these. <laughs> I made these Lion King ears with a special light up kind of poofy bow in the middle. Um, this tutorial is really simple. The ears are actually stitched. If you don't know how to use a sewing machine or you're not comfortable hand sewing, I do actually have a no sew Mickey ear tutorial that could be applied to this and then you would just have to kind of mimic that using the bow. Um, I also have a no sew bow tutorial that's very similar to this kind of material. Um, I will have both of those videos linked in the description box below and probably up in the cards at some point during the tutorial. These ears feature Simba, uh, t sorry, Simba, <laughs> Timon, Zazu, and then on the back we have Pumba and Simba again. These ears are also one of the prizes for another YouTube channel, um, A Disney Life For Me. They host Jeopardy and Trivia on their channel that is all Disney based. If you are interested in playing, um, these are actually the prize for the month of July in 2019. <laughs> so if you're past that date, I'm sorry, these are no longer a prize to be won. <laughs> like Jasmine. But obviously you can watch the tutorial and make them yourself. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. I found this Lion King fabric at Hobby Lobby. I got the gold sequin fabric for the bow at Walmart. And then you will also need these string small battery pack fairy lights. I get mine off Amazon and there is a link in the description box below. You're also going to need a filling for your bow, a one inch headband, and a trim for your ears. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. So to start off, I took my Lion King fabric and I took my ear cutting line template. All of these templates can be found in the description box below. And I traced over Zazu and Timon. And then I also picked a spot with Simba on it and then I went ahead and cut them out. I do prefer using a rotary blade for this, but if you have scissors, just go slow um, to make sure that your lines are nice and crisp and go ahead and cut out the ears. You will need to trace a total of four of these patterns uh, to per ear and make sure that you are using the ear cutting line template. Once you have your ears cut out, you're going to lay them down right sides together, which basically means the pretty part of the fabric together. And then you're gonna go ahead and pin them in place, right sides together and lay down the ear sewing line template and trace that onto your ear. I also like to use these disappearing ink pens because it, then it doesn't matter. The ink will eventually evaporate and you don't have to worry about it. For this set of ears I did choose to stitch mine using my sewing machine. I do have a tutorial both on hand sewing, using a sewing machine as well as a pair of no sew ears. So if you do not like to sew, please check out my other tutorial on this. I have it linked in the description box below as well as in a card above. For the inside of the ear you're going to use the foam and batting template. You're going to trace two of these onto a piece of craft foam and I have changed up how I do this a little bit to be more efficient. So you're actually just going to glue the first piece of craft foam onto your second piece of craft foam and then you only have to cut out two of these as opposed to four of them. Um, you want to double them up because one singular piece of craft foam is not really thick enough to help the ear retain its shape but this way you're still only cutting out two. And once you have both of these cut out, you're going to fold them kind of like a taco and place them inside of your ear once you have the fabric turned right side out. And that is going to help your ear retain its shape. For this next step, I'm choosing to stuff my ears. You don't have to stuff them, but I do prefer them just a little bit fluffy. You can also go all out and fully stuff these and make them really, really plush. It just depends on what your preferences are. But I do like to pull my stuffing apart a little bit just so that it's not all gathered up in one spot and then proceed to stuff each side of the ear. Make sure that while you're doing this you do compare the two ears that you made because it looks a little off if you don't make them the same thickness. After you stuff the ear you can put a thin line of hot glue and very carefully press down the fabric to close the ear up. Um, I will tell you guys this was so much easier having really long fingernails this time around because I just kind of poked it with my fingernail. Um, if you don't have long nails, that's totally fine. I am just telling you, this is probably the part where you could burn yourself, so please be careful or use a pen or something like that to poke at the hot glue. 
Now that your ear is all closed up, you can go ahead and add the trim. So just put a very thin line of hot glue and go ahead and carefully press down your trim. Make sure you're working a little bit at a time because hot glue does dry pretty quickly and you don't want the glue to dry before you have a chance to press down the trim. Then you're just going to trim off the excess, check your ends, and repeat for the second ear. Okay, now to cover the headband. So you're gonna wanna cut a strip. Mine is about three inches wide, but that's for my particular headband. And then you're gonna take your headband and kind of roll it across the fabric to make sure that it's long enough. I always make mine a little bit extra long. Mine ended up being about 16 inches. And then to actually attach it to the headband, I put a little bit of hot glue on the inside of the headband and fold the fabric inward. And then um, I do go ahead and cut it into kind of a tapered shape because headbands tend to taper at the end. And then this part is tedious, but it's I don't know a better way to do it. So you're basically just gonna line the inside of the headband with hot glue and very carefully press down the fabric into the middle. Um, this to me is the hardest part, honestly. I don't love this part. Um, I usually will leave my headbands uncovered unless I'm making ears for someone else, which these are the Jeopardy prize, so I wanted to make sure that they were extra nice. Um, but yeah, just take your time. I find that if you can be patient, it's not that bad, um, but it's just very difficult to get the exact right cut on the fabric. Um, if you do end up having some loose strings, that's okay. Just trim them off and check your work when you're done. thing I have done in the past to make the headband look even nicer is just lining the inside with some ribbon. I didn't have any ribbon that matched this particular fabric so I really didn't want to just put a random color on the inside um, but some people do really like the look of that so just some advice if you wanted to try that out. With the headband all done and the ears all done, you're going to take the spacing template that I have linked in the description box below. This just helps you get the right spacing between your ears and you're going to take that invisible ink marker and go ahead and mark where it, each ear goes. Then I apply a little bit of hot glue to the bottom of the ear and firmly press it down on the headband, making sure to line it up with that dot. When you are lining up your ears, make sure that they are in the center of the headband, meaning that they're not too far to the front or the back. And then again, firmly press down the second ear and they're all attached. So for this next part, um, you have to decide, this is totally personal preference, do you want some trim on the bottom? If you did have too much hot glue and maybe it oozed out, this is a good way to cover it up. I don't always do this, I just kind of check to see if I like the way it looks. And I did end up liking how this trim looked when it was kind of pointing upward. So I went ahead and attached it to the bottom of the ear on the front and the back. Okay, now for the light up bow. So I went ahead and cut my fabric using my rotary blade. Um, this sequin fabric I actually got from Walmart. I couldn't find this gold color at Joann's or at Hobby Lobby, but Walmart had it. Um, so I went ahead and cut mine into a um, rectangle that is about six inches by 12 inches. And then I went ahead and folded it um, to meet in the middle and create almost like a little pocket. Once you have this piece of fabric, um, I decided to sew the sides. You could hot glue the sides, and I do have a tutorial very similar to this that, again, I will have linked in the description box below um, where I actually hot glued the sides instead of stitching it. But for this particular bow, again, these ears are going to someone else. I did decide to stitch it. So I went ahead and pinned uh, my bow into place and then took it over to my sewing machine and stitched up the sides. Now, I did not stitch up the center, so again, how you created that little pocket, you're going to want to leave that open because that is how we're going to stuff the bow and get the lights on the inside. 
I did not record myself stitching it or stuffing the bow, but I think you get the idea. <laughs> this is the bow once it's been all stitched and stuffed. And now I'm going to go ahead and insert the lights. So you're going to want to go ahead and un unwind your fairy lights. And also you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn them on. That way you can see where the lights are lining up so that you don't end up with them all kind of bunched in the same spot. Or maybe you've got like a hot spot where it's just too bright in one area. Once you've got them in the area you like and you've checked them, you can go ahead and hot glue shut the center of the bow, leaving a little bit of space on the side if you're going to want to hide the light pack switch. This is really important. Make sure that you do not completely hot glue shut the bow at that little fold because if you're going to want to do the light switch the way that I did it, I did end up hiding it inside of that little pocket. Okay, and now you're going to take that gold fabric and cut a very, very thin piece. This is going to be what you wrap around the center of the bow to give it its right shape. This fabric is very, very thin, so be extra careful when you put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of the bow, and I wrapped my fabric around two times. So now I'm gonna give you an option of what to do with the light pack switch. So you could just glue it onto the back of the bow and wrap it, wrap it with this gold fabric, and that hides it pretty good. Um, but what I chose to do is actually to insert mine into the fold. So this is why it was so important to leave that gap. Now. You do have to be aware of this because stuffing could potentially come out of that spot, but the way I folded my fabric, I find it very, very unlikely if you're not trying to get the stuffing out. But the biggest reason I wanted the light switch pack to be inside of the fold was because this way you could remove it and change the batteries if they do die. Now that your bow is all done, you're gonna apply some hot glue to the bottom of it. I did a pretty generous amount and then I'm firmly pressing it down to the center of the headband, both on the front and the back of the bow. Again, make sure that hot glue is not like seeping out somewhere or something like that because you do want these to look nice and clean. And you do have to hold this for a good while because you want to make sure that it's very secure. And there's the light switch all nice and hidden. And this is pretty much what they look like when they are all complete. I hope you guys liked this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. If you guys have any requests for future videos, leave it for me in the comment section down below. Or if you have any questions or need any clarification, please don't hesitate to contact me. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and will subscribe for future Disney content. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.